Hey guys, it's Den here. And this week, I'm gonna talk about show business and working with celebrities. I've been very fortunate over my career to work with a few fairly well-known celebrities. And the thing about working with celebrities is it really does elevate your work because of the perception that if you're working with A-list celebrity over here or A-list celebrity over here, you must be good at what you do. And the truth is, you generally do have to be quite good at what you do. But but I'm but I'm no different to you, okay? I started my career as a television cameraman in television news. I met some really cool people along the way and some opportunities presented themselves. So uh, following on from last week's episode where I talk about collaboration, these collaborations have ended up with me working with some pretty big names. And this week I wanna share some of the behind the scenes from some of those projects and just share exactly how we got there. So uh, I'd love you to subscribe to the channel, um, ding the bell, hit the subscribe to get the notifications and, and let me know what you think of these videos in the comments. Um, this is the last one in a series I made for, for Sony just recently and I hope you find them useful. So tell me in the comments, what, what have you taken away from this series? What's been helpful? and I will see you on the other side. Now it can seem very glamorous working with celebrities and well-known artists, movie stars, musicians, and no doubt when you're involved in a large event, it is very exciting. I mean, I love music, and so whenever I get an opportunity to film music, I I'm super excited. But there's a different kind of pressure that comes with working on those kind of gigs. And what I wanted to do was just take you through some of the realities of how those things go down in practice. In essence, filming with a celebrity or a large event is really no different to any other production. Not from my point of view anyway. I'm very clear in everything I do that the more effort you put into planning and pre-production, well, frankly, the easier production gets and the easier things become. Problems happen when you're unprepared. And from my days as a freelance cameraman, doing live television, I'd always have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. So when you're working on, let's call them higher leveraged activities or, or, or riskier projects where the stakes are a little higher, or perhaps you don't have quite as much control, then the more planning you do, the better. So what I wanna do is take you through three projects that we've worked on with fairly well-known names. The first one was a concert with Robbie Williams. This was at Wembley. It was a few years ago now, but uh, it was part of his European tour. And I was filming for two of four dates with a colleague of mine, James, from Hangman Studios. Now, the thing about gigs like this is they are huge. Wembley holds 80,000 people. This was the very, very big show. Now we got to Wembley at about 10 o'clock in the morning. Now the show doesn't start till like 7 p.m. and Rob's not on stage till like nine. So we're there a full 11 hours before. And what we're doing is we are setting a plan up because what we were doing was shooting a documentary and James was cutting a four minute documentary, sort of mini doc of each show. And so we had to find an angle and a story for each show. And the thing with music is it's the same show every night, just in a different location. So we get there early. We, one of the things you don't necessarily appreciate is how big these venues are. So it takes a very long time to walk from one end of the stadium to the other. So we had to shoot some B-roll of fans arriving, of the location. And so I went off for two or three hours, a camera and slider, and went and recorded a bunch of B-roll that we could use later on. Now we'd, we'd stop for lunch, then we'd, we'd shoot some other shots in the stadium. Once doors open, we wanted to create this really cool effect of like bullet time where I went around and stood in every turnstile on a certain level of the stadium and shot uh, some shots. Now, just to get permission to do this involved an hour's worth of communication with the, the venue. So even though I was working for the artist, um, it wasn't necessarily straightforward. So there's a lot of human negotiation has to go and a lot of patience and a lot of understanding that 
you are just a small part of a much bigger machine. Um, then just before showtime, um, we get a lot of fans, you know, enjoying the atmosphere, building a picture of, of the atmosphere. And then before the show, the artist comes out with his band and does a kind of huddle where they get G'd up for the show. At that point, I then go out into the pit, which is the area in front of the stage, because my job is to film the reactions of fans and some key moments in the show with Rob, because I've got a colleague who's shooting elsewhere, doing some other stuff, so a lot of communication. But it ended up being an amazing experience. We shot over two nights, and really, um, it's, a, it's a huge operation. There's like 300 people working on that show. So you have to be very mindful of how you fit in. Another show we did was with Duran Duran, an artist that's been around for many decades. Um, and we were originally going to film with them in Berlin. And we'd actually f gone out to Berlin uh, to set up a show in Berlin. It was all being shot on Sony cameras. And we have got to the point where the techs were starting to bring in the show gear, some of the band had arrived, and we were just getting ready to prep to film the show, and then the lead singer had a problem with his voice, and at the very last minute, the show was cancelled. So that was a situation where we were all ready to go, and it didn't happen. Fast forward about eight months, and I'm sitting in an office with, with uh, James and his team, and I said, hey, I see Duran Duran are playing in London. Is it worth going back to the band to see if we want to film a show and see if they're interested? And they put that to the band and about eight days later they said, yep, how about next Friday in um, Manchester? So from suggesting it to doing the show was about 10, 12 days. This was a very, very big event. We had 18 crew on set, 22 cameras. And this was a show that we filmed as what we call ISO cameras. So we had individual cameras, no talk back, no truck. We didn't have time for that. We filmed this like you could film it. You know, we filmed it with multiple cameras, multiple positions. The secret to doing this is again in the planning and you'll see a theme coming through. I, I'm a producer first, shooter second. I'm always thinking about logistics and costs and how we can achieve something within a given budget. So in that particular instance, uh, we were again in a large venue, internal venue, about 20,000 people. We had two cranes, we had multiple cameras, big lenses, um, again shooting on the Sony F3, which was the camera we were using at the time. Um, and we had to coordinate all of these, these, these shows. Again, you don't really get any rehearsal time. One of the secrets to shooting music, though, on, in a live situation is that there are certain angles you want to get that are just impossible during the show. Perhaps it's a camera position where you're shooting a keyboard player, and if you were on stage, it would interrupt the show. So one of the things we did was, during the sound check, um, we filmed band members on stage filming and playing along to songs they would be playing during the set. And in the edit, we cut them in. So what you'll notice when you see the edit uh, is that you'll see a camera position and you'll be thinking, where's the camera? Well, it was, it was shot like several hours earlier. So we often use techniques like that or we put cameras in unusual places. One of the things me and the team did on that show was we wanted to shoot the show in a very unconventional way. We wanted to put cameras in places that you wouldn't normally see cameras. So we had two cranes and we had camera positions around the stage that we love to shoot through things and just look at angles that are a little bit unusual. Now, finally, I want to talk about a soccer player called Cristiano Ronaldo. And we were invited to go to Madrid from London at the time to film with him while he was doing a photo shoot. Now, this was for a computer game that he was an endorsee of. And we flew out to Madrid for two days. Now, in that two day period, the first day was setting up the studio and figuring out how we were going to cover the action. Day two, we were in at the studio very, very early. It was a green screen shoot. And what had happened was we'd hired all this equipment um, to set up the green screen. And then we lit it all and it just wasn't working. Something wasn't right. We were using green fluorescent tubes and it was just too much in the space we were in. So overnight, I had a complete rethink. We got up at like five in the morning, went back to the studio, relit everything. And then uh, Ronaldo came in, did a three hour photo shoot. And then we had 60 minutes with him to film 
the uh, the little sort of spot that we had to do. Now we don't have any behind the scenes footage of that because we were literally on the cameras filming everything raw. But I'll, sh I'll show you a little clip of the final film and it, it turned out really well but again very very high pressure and the way we did that was we just have hanging multiple cameras. Two cameramen, six cameras, locked off shots and it was a very very stressful and high pressure situation because we had 60 minutes with this superstar of soccer and um, we just had to get get the shots. So what I really wanted to kind of share with you during this sort of look and retrospective back at some of the bigger projects I've done is that they're often very chaotic, they're often not as organized as you might think, and they're often very, very high pressure. But if you treat it like any other job, you find yourself just being very focused, and if you're planned well, you'll find yourself just going through the, the kind of the, the automatic motions that you would go through on any shoot. You know where you're going to shoot, what shots you're going to get, you work through that formula of capturing the information, wide shot, mid shot, tight shot, making sure you've got coverage. And um, the great thing if I can share with you about working with celebrities or well-known personalities is it, it elevates you enormously in the eyes of your market and your customers because when you're working with high level celebrities or people that are well known in an industry or a sector, there is an assumption that if you are working with these people, you must be at the top of your game. And the truth is you have to know what you're doing. But if I can leave you with one tip, if you get the opportunity to work with a celebrity, take it even if it means working for free because the value you will get from being able to share that content in the future will be enormous. Guys, I hope you found this series useful and insightful and thank you for watching.